This is Pass for Two, People and Places, brought to you by Jules Verne, taking you around the world, sharing memories and introducing you to the people at the heart of everything we do. I'm Abby, and in this series, I'll be delving into past adventures, inside stories, future journeys, inspiring you to discover the wonders of the world. Hello listeners and welcome back to another episode of Pass for Two People and Places brought to you by Jules Verne. I am super excited and delighted to be sat here with Carmel today. Carmel works in our air product team and supports with all of the flights that we book for our many customers here at Jules Verne and has travelled quite a few places herself recently. So I'm really excited to have this chat with you Carmel. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks Abby. Thanks for inviting me. So first of all let's talk about as we do with everyone on the podcast your sort of relationship with travel and the history that you have with travel. So what was your first memory of travelling? So both my parents are Irish. Um, So our family holidays um, as children and growing up as teenagers as well was always the full summer holiday, six weeks, we would go to Ireland to where my mum and my dad were both from. Um, so yeah, they, it was always really exciting because, you know, mom and dad, they, you know, we, nobody had mobile phones. They didn't even have like landline telephones over there. So their sort of communication would be writing. They'd be getting letters, you know, letters would come every week. Mom would write to her mom and her sisters, um, dad as well. Um, so they're always so excited about sort of going home for the summer holidays. Um, and it was always a long journey but we were always so excited about it so we would have to get the train from Euston to Holyhead in Wales and then we'd get the boat from Holyhead to Dunleary on the east coast like near Dublin and then my mum's from the west coast she's from Mayo so then that was like another sort of three hour maybe four hour train journey and yeah it was just it was just lovely lovely memories of family holidays there because you know living in London we didn't have the freedom, you know, to go out. Mum, mum would be worried about us playing out and talking to strangers, and she was always really concerned about it. You know, coming from a small village in in Ireland, and um, when we got to her home, you know, we were allowed to run free. And it was a lovely farm, and there was all the animals around, and yeah, it was lovely, lovely memories. So. But every single holiday would be six weeks in Ireland. And you never got tired of it. It sounds like you really loved it. Yeah, we really loved it. I mean, I think sometimes, you know, as we got a little bit older, I used to be a little bit envious of my school friends going to like Butlins and to Pontins and to all these um, holiday camps, you know, because I thought, oh, my God, they're so lucky. But... But no, we did. We had a great time. You know, we was, it was so lovely to see all grandparents, our aunties and uncles. And, you know, they had, you know, we always had so much fun and, you know, lots of crack, as you know, the Irish way. And we were just allowed to do so many things that we couldn't do at home. We had so much freedom. Oh. It, was always, it was quite basic, you know, like um, granny and granddad's, you know, cottage. They they didn't even have any running water. So we had to go and get the water from the well, um, you know, be helping milking the cows, you know, feeding the pigs and collecting all the eggs. So, yeah, no, they were lovely, lovely memories. People pay a lot of money for that now, Carmel. People do these holidays, these working ranch and farm holidays, and you did it every summer. We did. You started yeah. the trend. We did, yeah. No, they, they, it was lovely memories. But um, going back now, years later, you know, we, we loved it because of the freedom and, you know, seeing our cousins and just having a, a lovely time. But um, now going back, I realise just how beautiful it is as well, um, especially where my dad's from. That's He's from Leitrim. And that was even more remote than where my mum was from. So So what was your first memory of sort of travelling independently outside of the family environment? What can you remember and tell me about that? Um, So my very first trip, I finished doing my A-levels and didn't know really what I'd do. I had a sort of like thought I might would like to be an air hostess that was in my mind so I thought mm, maybe I might see if I can get into a, work for a travel company um so my first job was actually with Citalia arranging and helping sort of you know prepare for people's holidays and um yeah we got to go on some fun trips as well so I went to Rimini mm-hmm. 
I was probably about 18, I think, at the time, and, you know, all my friends and, you know, colleagues at work. And, um, yeah, I just thought, oh, wow, you know, it's amazing to go somewhere different. The food was so lovely and, you know, beautiful, sunny, sunny weather and beautiful beaches and just felt so grown up and... Yeah, and completely different to London and, and Ireland, Com- like you know, completely different culture and yeah. all sorts. Yeah, I mean, you know, these sort of places I'd only ever seen in the brochures, you know, um, to to actually go and experience it myself, it was like, wow, you know, it's just yeah, completely because I, I mean, we did go to sort of you know the beaches in um, Ireland, but you know, the weather was never <laughs> never that good. Um, there's always quite a lot of rain, so yeah, just to go there and have you know sunny weather and just you know sitting on the beach and just thought yeah this is this is amazing I'm going to do this every year. Do you have a favourite memory or moment from that first trip to Italy where you think god wow the world is the world's my oyster this is huge. Yeah I mean it was just everything just so different and I just didn't really know really what to what to experience um and just you know the just the, even just the Italian accents and the clothes and everyone looked so stylish, and and I think the food as well. That was I mean that's still really important to me now. Um, quite a foodie, so you know just trying all these different pastas and and I'd never tried food like that before. So it was just a whole whole new experience. Love that. And freedom as well, you know, just being there with all, I think we we're all sort of fairly similar ages. I think we, had, we may have had some of the older managers or something with us, but we just had a, a great time and we just had nobody, you know, telling us what to do. So we, we ran, ran riot. <laughs> so talking about food then, you're quite a big foodie. You like trying different foods. Where in the world has been the best food you've ever tried? Is there a particular dish that you sort of reminisce about and think, oh, I'll I'll never be able to recreate that? Or is there a particular place in the world you think that's the place to go if you're a foodie? Um, I mean, I really like um, tapas food. So I really like Spain. Um, We used to go to Mallorca quite a lot as family holidays. Um, And I just remember going to this tiny little village and just having this amazing tapas, like, you know, figs and cheese together and, you know, some honey drizzled over it and a nice glass of wine and just sitting in the sunshine. And it just, every food always tastes so much better when you're in a warm country. And yeah, but so Spain, I mean, I love um, food in Italy, Um, love the food in India. That was just, you know, I couldn't. I mean, I don't eat a lot of meat, but I couldn't imagine just having so many different curries just made out of vegetables. And you think just the flavours they get and just, yeah, everything was just amazing. But I think wherever I go, the the food, you know, you always want to try a different cuisine. And yeah, it's I, I normally enjoy food wherever we go, really. So is food for you one of the things that you think that's the reason why I'm going to plan a holiday? Do you sort of look at your destinations and think that would be a really good place to kind of experience and try new food and drink? Or is there other elements of a holiday that sort of capture you? Um, no, definitely food is is a big part. Um, my husband's also, a, I would call myself a foodie, but he is a, a real foodie and also really loves his wines as well. So it plays a, a you know really big part in our holidays. You know, like we went to um, went to California um, and went to Napa to experience all the wines there and, and, you know, the food, different foods along the way there as well. So, yeah, we would probably plan our holidays really where where they're going to ha- have the good food, really. Um, so what was Napa like then? Did you do sort of one of these ones where you go around on a bike and you're cycling across the gravel, sort of going through the vineyards and things? How did you find Napa? Well... I mean, it started off, we had, um, um, like, we planned um, a trip to California, but it was actually our honeymoon. And then we decided, um, you know, we'd both been married before, we couldn't decide what to do, where to get married. So we decided to get married in California, just the two of us. And we actually got married in Carmel. So, um, so yeah, so that sort of started off like the, um, you know, going flying into Los Angeles, then we went to Santa Mon- Monica, um, then we went along to Santa Barbara, then to Carmel, which was beautiful, and I got married there because I've all, always like as a, a teenager, I always used to read these books by Danielle Still, um, a real romance sort of novelist. And she'd always um, be driving somewhere, you know, in California. 
and should always be going through Carmel and should always be this, you know, the, the person in, in the story would always be this beautiful girl and should be on the sun-drenched beaches in California and Carmel. And I was like, wow, that's my name, you know, I'd love to go there. So to actually go there and get married there was, yeah, it was, uh, it was lovely. Really special. Yeah, and then we went on to, it was very special, we went on to Yosemite, um, which was amazing as well. And then eventually, and then on to Napa, which was probably the highlight for both of us. We, we both said that we'd love to go back there and spend a little bit more time there and experience more of the wine yards and... Yeah, it was lovely. And you've been champagne tasting, haven't you, in, in France recently? Yeah, I have, yeah. I think it was last year I went on the Peniche Champagne um, as a tour manager for Jules Verne. Um, so got to meet all our lovely um, customers and enjoyed their holiday with them. Um, so, yeah, that was lovely, um, going through all the champagne areas, uh, regions, and again, um, wine tasting and all the lovely food and going to to see how their champagne is made and you know the vineyard so that was yeah it was a lovely really relaxing trip and yeah very tranquil and yeah perfect I think sometimes people can underestimate how relaxing a barge holiday is. I mm-hmm. think people necessarily think of maybe barge canals in the UK where you have to get out and mm. tie it and wait for a lock and things. But in France, you know, you're cruising along a cu- couple of miles an hour, beautiful French food, you know, given to you by amazing French chefs, you know, sort yeah. of four or five course dinners. You've got birds tweeting in the background, you know, the sounds of cycling along the canal. You know, I think people underestimate how relaxing a holiday like that can be. Yeah, really relaxing. Um, You know, we had lovely, lovely weather as well. And it is just, you know, you stop off and then you go and visit a lovely, you know, little town or a little city or, you know, go and see some of the, you know, churches or something. You have a lovely little sightseeing trip and then back on to the barge. And as you said, amazing food, Um, you know, focals menu you know meals for your lunch and again in the evening lovely wines to match um yeah and then sitting out on the deck in the in the um afternoon and just relaxing watching the world go by it was lovely really really recommend it if you just want to you know relax and have a really you know everything done for you so you're completely looked after beautiful food and yeah and watching the world go by So let's go a little bit further afield. You've mentioned India. Tell me about your trip to India. What was it like? You know, what did you love about it? Mm. So we went to India um, this year, actually. Gosh, it seems, yeah, just this year, just in March. It was the first time I've ever been to India. And and for David as well, my husband. And um, when we got there, we, we just loved it. We just fell in love with it straight away. Um, and just really thought, like, why have we never been to India before? You know, um, sort of late late stage in our in our lives, fairly late stage. Um, but really, just scratched the surface. So we just went to Mumbai, which we absolutely loved. Um, stayed at the beautiful Taj Mahal Palace Hotel, which was like, you know, you just didn't want to leave it. It was just so so lovely. Um, people were just so lovely. The food so lovely. Um, and just, yeah, just so, such a different contrast to what other places that we've been to before. Um, and then, I, you know, we only had two nights in Mumbai, which just really wasn't enough. And we had an amazing guide, um, Jules Byrne guide. And he was just so, I mean, of course, you know, so knowledgeable and just took us to around the whole of Mumbai. You know, we went to see Gandhi, where Gandhi lived. Um, we went to the oldest laundry in the world. And... Um, he was just so in tune with what we wanted to do. He could tell, you know, that we were, well, David mainly, because he just kept talking about food the whole time and the curries that he loved. And he took us to a little, um, and he said, I don't want you to try the street food, but let me take you where I would go, which is the best, where, you know, the best um, advice to get, you know, go where the locals eat. And we just had this very, very simple food. Um, and I can't actually remember the names of all the dishes now. But each one, and he wouldn't, we were saying like, you know, come on, please eat with us. He wouldn't eat with us. He just wanted to sit with us and explain every single dish which was coming out. And it was just, yeah, the tastes were just amazing. And it was probably something like, I don't know, five pounds or something. And we had just like filled our bellies. We had so much to eat. It was lovely. Um definitely could have stayed longer in Mumbai we just don't, didn't you know really see as much as we wanted to but then we flew down to Goa um, which was lovely beautiful um, you know so relaxing 
Um, but I was sort of itching to get to see other cities. You know, I thought, oh, you know, it's it's lovely here. I had, you know, we I think we had six nights in Goa, and it was like oh, I just wish that we did another city as well, and then went to Goa, and obviously had a bit longer. Um, but especially actually in Goa, you know, the, the staff um, at the hotel, you know, around the bars and by, around the pool, every every single one was just so lovely, so kind and just so happy, um, really happy souls. You know, they're just so, take so much pride in what they do, um, whatever their job was. They, they just did it so well. They did it to their best ability and just wanted to talk um, and chat. And, you know, of course, you know, we, you know, love talking to people and meeting people. And, you know, they'd all want to tell us about where they were from in India. And they're all from all over India. So we felt like we met, you know, different, you know, guys and girls from so many different places, you know, Calcutta and um, Amritsa and Varanasi. And everyone had their story to tell and about the food that their moms cook and the food that they miss. So, yeah, we just thought we just want to stay here and we want to just travel all over. So... It's definitely a destination that I just wish I'd been there sooner um, because I know there's so much to see, um, but definitely, definitely want to go back. I think that's it with India, isn't it? Everybody in India seems to be a brand ambassador for their own country. Yeah. And the places in India are so different and the stories are just mm. incredible. It's definitely probably one of the places where I would go, I'd go back now. Yeah, you know, you, you could take me there anytime, any mm. day. I would, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Definitely. So where is where is next for you? What are you sort of thinking of? We talked about sort of past travels and recent mm -hmm. travels. Where's the next big trip that you've got planned or the next little trip? Um, okay, so the next um, big trip actually is going to be China. Wow. Yeah, because m my sister's actually living in China at the moment and uh, my brother-in-law. Um, they're in Shanghai. Um, but, yeah, so they're, um, I'm sort of thinking, like, you know, would they be our tour guide? They wouldn't be our tour guide, but they would definitely be our tour managers over there. <laughs> and they'd have a nice um, trip planned for us. We may go to um, Beijing, um, the Terracotta Army, and um, maybe Hong Kong as well, because that's what we'd planned to do this year. Um, to see if it ties in with the um, rugby sevens because um, my husband David and her husband's David as well and they're both absolutely mad rugby fans so um, I'd love to go to Hong Kong as well so so that'd be nice yeah. and the train networks in China as well they're on time they're, they're speedy they're amazing they're modern so you can sort of explore like you said with your sister being a bit of a tour guide tour yeah. manager and just explore and you know yeah. go see the Great Wall of China yeah. the Terracotta Army see the pandas yeah eat some amazing duck yeah. <laughs> while you're there yeah. all of that stuff that yeah. sounds an incredible trip. Yeah, yeah, no, I really, we really want to do that. So that will be, be next year. And um, <clears throat> I'm actually going to um, Portugal. I'm going to be tour manager on, on the Royal Barge of the Juro in um, June. So I'm really looking forward to that because I've been to Porto before, but that's, and I've been to the Algarve, but that's the only place in Portugal I've been to. So I've wanted to go on that trip for such a long time and I know that everyone who goes on it absolutely loves it so I'm really looking forward to that it's really exciting I have to say probably from a very biased point of view but of all of the tours that Jules Van do and all of the tours that I've been incredibly lucky to go on mm. I have to say I think the Royal Barge on the Douro is probably my favourite oh wow um, the Douro Valley you know mm. you, you, you're this tiny little barge in the middle of this once wild river that has now been tamed by sort of the most sophisticated lock systems in Europe. You've got the deepest lock in Europe and you look up and you just see these vast hills and mountains of rolling green and rock and, and vineyards. It's, yeah, it's just absolutely amazing and it's mm. such a leisurely holiday and such an iconic and special boat, obviously, yeah. being gifted to the Queen by our founder, Philip Morrell. So it has a real special place, I think, doesn't it, with everybody in, in Jules Verne, mm. but... I definitely think Porto as well. It's, yeah. I think it's probably my favourite place in Europe. Any city by water is is a good place to go. Yeah. Um, yeah and Porto is, is yeah, one of I them. Yeah, I love Porto, yeah. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. And, yeah, you've definitely sold it to me. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, Carmel, thank you so much for talking to me today. I've absolutely loved it. I am going to ask you the question that I ask everybody on this podcast. Um, And I don't know, normally I have an inkling. I don't know where you're going to choose. But my question to you is, where in the world has captured your heart the most and why that place? Yeah, that is um, a difficult one. And, you know, I've heard lots of the podcasts and I know every, I think everybody really struggles with this one. I mean, India, I just absolutely fell in love with it straight away. And it's a place that, um, you know, I definitely 100% want to go back. Um, But another place that I was very lucky enough to go last year um, on a trip with Jules Verne was to Vietnam and to Cambodia. And that was, I'd never been to that part of the world before. So for me, it was just, everything was just so different. And, you know, the like, well, the food again, but the people, um, just the madness of the cities, you know, in Hanoi and all the motorbikes and just all the markets and all the colours and everything. Um, so I absolutely loved um, Vietnam. But the place that I really loved so much was Cambodia. I just absolutely fell in love with it. Um, it was just, you know, beautiful. We only, again, a little bit like um, India, just scratched the service because we just went to see Amrip, um, but obviously went to see the Angkor Wat, which was just, you just, you know, you look at these pictures and you look online and you can see photographs of it, but just actually when you're there up so close and just hearing all the history, um, again, we had an amazing tour guide who... Oh, he was just so so knowledgeable. Um, he was one of the first tour guys in Siam Reap when before the country became completely independent. He said that at that time there was only like about ten tour guides, um, and you know now he said you know there's probably hundreds, maybe maybe even more. Um, but he actually even lived in Angkor Wat as a child. And um, it was just amazing. And just, again, it was an, another place, a little bit like India, where I definitely want to go back to. So, yeah, I think probably Cambodia and, and India. Oh, amazing. Carmel, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. I've really enjoyed this conversation. We've travelled to lots of places together mm-hmm. during this conversation. So thank you so much for your time and thank oh, you for being our guest. Thank you. Thank you so much. We hope you've enjoyed the latest episode of Passport 2, People and Places. Look out for our next episode where we'll be talking to more guests about the people and places that have inspired them the most. We'd love to hear your feedback, so please do get in touch. Thanks for listening. Listener.